welcome everyone. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek, and today we're going to be going over life insurance agents, the infinite banking concept, and some vital things that you need to know as a consumer so that you uh, feel that much more secure and that you have some sense of uh, reliability when it comes to getting information, having the right information. Okay, so let's direct our attention to the board and go over some specific things that you need to know. If you currently have a whole life policy, term, IUL, whatever you have, or if you're in the process of obtaining one. So, regarding life insurance agents, here are some critical things that you, yourself, as the consumer, want to know that your agent has. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about personality, ethics, knowledge, uh, basically their overall way of being in how they do business with their clients, including you. So the first thing that I wrote down in my mind, if, if I was a consumer, so to give you a little background, I am a life insurance agent licensed in the state of Florida. I also park my license with a broker called IBC Global. Okay, the head of that is uh, Steve Parisi. So that, what that does is it allows me to be pretty much licensed in all 50 states. So basically I'm able to sell life insurance all over the US, okay? But I'm only licensed in the state of Florida. So with that being said, I'm giving you perspective as an agent, but also as a consumer. Because before I became a life insurance agent, I was interested in life insurance for myself personally and my family. So with that being said, the first thing I was looking for was ethics. How does this person do business, right? How do you do business? How, how do you operate from client to client, from call to call, follow up to follow up to execution, and then some, right? And in terms of once a policy is in place, how many times do I get to communicate with you as a life insurance agent? Are we gonna have an annual call or a quarterly call? How do you operate, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is research, okay? How much does not only you know as a consumer, but how much does the life insurance agent know? So it's important that you yourself do research on the agent, right? Like, okay, are they licensed? How long have they been in business, right? Uh, how many clients do you have? Um, do you have any content? You know, do you do you, do you teach this thing and sell it, or do you just sell it? Um, how long do you plan on being a life insurance agent? Is this just a stepping stone? Um, you know, do you have a team that you work with? All these different things, right? So, me as a life insurance agent now, what I was looking for as a consumer with the desire to actually become an agent in the future was I was like, man, who can I model, right? Who, who, who can I model? Who can I trust? Uh, how, how can I become this ethical person that's licensed, that will be in business for a long period of time, that's reliable, has tons of knowledge, right? And that's when I found my friend uh, Steve Parisi, okay? Real awesome guy. Like I said, he runs IBC Global and um, his, his company is solely focused on the infinite banking concept, but also educating agents and consumers on how to you know, design your own policy for the infinite banking method, create wealth, you know, strategies on, on paying off debt, designing policies, going from one uh, policy to another, okay? So these are just general things that I, I thought I should you know, let you know, ethics, research, license, you know, you, you want to make sure that person is licensed, whoever you're talking to. How long have they been in business? Are they reliable? And how much knowledge do they have? Are they knowledgeable about what they are selling you, right? Because here, here's what I've noticed, right? For, the, for my um, students that are velocity banking students or, you know, you came across this channel because you're, you know, trying to learn about velocity banking or infinite banking. So regarding the velocity banking concept, you need to get a credit card, line of credit, secured, unsecured, or a home equity line of credit, right? Well, when you go to the bank and apply for those things, 
I'm sure you can agree for those that have done this, right? You're a student, you're, you're practicing the concept that the banker, the loan officer knew very little about what you're doing. Number one, the velocity banking concept. And number two, they, they were, maybe they were selling you to get something else because that's is what they were trained to do. They're trained to sell loans before lines because the amount of money that the bank, right? The bank owners and then the managers and then the employees and the staff, right? They're training the staff to sell the loans because the banks make the most money on loans as opposed to credit lines, okay? Both have their pros and cons. So with that being said, let's switch gears over to what to be really aware of when you're working with an agent. And here's some red flags when you should not work with a particular agent, a particular life insurance agent, because it's not always the company, right? So going back to um, like the bank analogy that I gave where the banks are telling the agents what to do, right? Well, in life insurance companies, it's pretty much the same way. Now, here's where it gets tricky. As a life insurance agent, they only make money on the premiums that is being sold through an individual life insurance policy. So unlike a bank, a loan officer, they're receiving a salary and a paycheck, right? And then, then they get bonuses, year-end bonuses, things like that. So whatever they're taught, that's what they're going to teach. Whereas with insurance agents, they get to be a little more creative. And this can be both positive and negative for the consumer. So when I say negative, right, a life insurance agent can practice some unethical practices to get you to purchase life insurance. That would increase their what? Their pay because they only make money on their commission. So it's per policy, okay? So with that being said, let me show you something real quick. You should not work with an agent if they tell you to lie on an application, on a life insurance application, right? So here would be an example. Let's say you had a heart attack in the past, right? Or, or some sort of heart scare, but you don't have a, I should say like a disease or you don't have um, what am I trying to say? Like you haven't had an issue in say three years, right? Maybe you had a heart attack three years ago, right? And you let your agent know this information, right? You say, hey, um, my heart is not the best. I'm in great health right now, right? But I've had instances in the past where I've had a heart attack, a stroke, some sort of, you know, critical event that is going to be in your medical records, right? So if your agent tells you to lie on an application because of health reasons, that is what's called misrepresentation, okay? And this is a, a tool that the life insurance company can use to deny a claim in the event you die. So for example, let's say you had a heart attack years ago, Okay, you're, prob you're more likely prone, you're, you're more likely to have another one, you know, as long as you, you know, if you kept living the same lifestyle, if you drastically changed, then hopefully it won't happen. But there is a higher chance that it, it could happen to you, right? So let's say you lie on the life insurance application. You go through the blood work, the medical examination, all that good stuff. You lie to the medical examiner that you've never had a heart attack or... Um, that you don't have any issues or something like that. And for some God for reason, somehow it, it goes through uh, underwriting and you get approved for life insurance, okay? And then let's say you have the life insurance in place. You've been paying into it for like three years. Year four, you have a heart attack and you die, okay? Check this out. This is what I was reading. Uh, when I was taking my educational courses for my life insurance um, 
uh, licensed so that I can stay licensed. That's another thing. Uh, insurance have uh, insurance agents have to take 24 credit hours of continuing education so that they can stay up to date on rules, uh, protocols, compliance, ethical behaviors. Majority of the whole course of that um, those 24 credit hours, majority of that was ethics. Ethics. Everything was ethics because we as agents have a lot more flexibility. We're not exactly on the hook, right? Because a contract is a contract. Once you sign it as the customer for a life insurance policy, and that, and there were some issues, like I, you know, in this example, on your on your medical records, or there's, you know, just something wasn't properly added in there, and then your family goes to claim that death benefit, and they can't. That's going to be a major ethical issue. And guess what? The agent's off the hook. They're not going to come back to them. Right? Because you signed the contract. You lied with them. So, you know, they're, they're, it's very hard to prove that the agent was, was in on it. Right? Because it was just a lie. Okay? Um, so with that being said, let's go back. So let's say you die. Right? Have a heart attack four years after having a life insurance policy. What the company can use uh, is called material representation where they basically can deny the whole claim to the death benefit that you know you have been paying into that whole life policy so in a nutshell don't lie tell the truth right if you are in poor health let your agent know that the agent is supposed to act as the <clears throat> the agent is is acting as a representor of the insurance company and they're they're like the first line of defense in terms of you know health getting approved for a uh, a life insurance policy okay so very important to know the second thing is called the churning method okay this is a that's a big one the churning method okay basically is a strategy that life insurance agents will use to convince you to open multiple life insurance policies on yourself, okay? So be very, very aware, okay? I'm telling you right now. Let, for example, let's say you start a whole life policy on yourself and you're paying in five grand, five grand a year, whatever it is. Let's say you're trying to do the infinite banking concept with it and you're putting five grand a year and then the agent comes back three years later and says, hey, um, you can take all that cash value that's in your existing policy, dump it into a new policy, right? And now you'll have two more death benefit, and now you have two policies growing, tax-free, yada, yada, whatever sales pitch they give you. That is called churning, okay? And the exact definition, definition of churning is the practice whereby policy values in an existing life insurance policy, let's say the first one that you start, or even an annuity contract, including but not limited to cash, loan policies, uh, loan values, dividend values, and any riders to that policy or annuity contract with the same insurer for the purpose of earning additional premiums, fees, commissions, or other compensation, okay? The churning method is also a strategy. It's, it's kind of hard to prove that that's what the agent was doing because they can twist it and say, oh, uh, you're making more money, sir. So um, you, you, you know, maybe your business is exploding. You need, more, you need more life insurance, which could be a factual statement. Like there is you know, some truth to that. But you want to make sure that they're not... Um, putting you in a new policy that's maybe going to be more money than the first one. Uh, now you're paying for two premiums. I have a different strategy as an insurance agent and someone that sells for uh, sells the infinite banking concept. Because regarding the infinite banking concept, we could design one policy that can be 
as effective or better, right, in most cases better, than having multiple policies. Whereas it's all in the policy design. How was your policy originally designed for? Did it, did it take into the, into the equation that, okay, you might 10x your income in the next few years, okay? That's what I do for my clients, that's what I do for my own self, uh, my, own, my own policies, or the other strategy, which could be construed as churning, is this right here. I myself, I have a policy with Mass Mutual, right? Putting in 6,000 a year, my MEC limit is 11,000. From the time I started that policy and the time I started my business, YouTube, right? Selling products and services, things like that, I 10X'd my income. So the original policy was based off a 22 or 23 year old individual male making only 35K a year salary. So the death benefit, the age, and the finances, boom, developed that policy. That was good for them. I've 10X'd my income, right? So instead of making 35K a year, I'm now in the neighborhood of multiple six figures, okay? So with that being said, I designed a new policy where I'm putting in 70,000 a year with another life insurance company called Guardian, which is one of the four major mutual life insurance companies. So I'm putting in 70,000 a year, my death benefits way more than the existing one. The reason why that is not churning, okay, is because I'm not taking from here to, you know, start a new one here and I'm not taking out loans, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make it difficult for me to start a new one. Like this is a brand new design based on brand new income, brand new finances, brand new debt tools, brand new everything. Churning would be, same example, 22, 23 year old male making 35K a year, putting in 6K a year, MEC limits 11,000, funds it for two, three years, gets a, gets a $10,000 increase, goes from making 35K a year to 45. And then the insurance agent then convinces that young kid to get another policy for like the same amount or maybe more. And they say, oh, you know, you can borrow from here, borrow from your cash value, start a new one with the same company or maybe a different one. And oh, and, and maybe take out a loan or something to help fund the policy, okay? Like, you see, it's, that's not ethical, okay? It's very, not very ethical at all. So with that being said, be aware as a customer really do research whether it's the infinite banking concept or just life insurance term life whole life iul variable what whatever it is do a, loads of research a lot take time right it takes about a month you know or less for underwriting and medical anyway so you can take that time to really grill your life insurance agent and ask him or her a ton of questions, okay? And if they elude or they try to avoid questions, hey man, uh, deuces, okay? If they are, uh, I don't wanna say hostile, but like they raise their voice or maybe they're just not giving you all the details, you, you just get, you get the feeling, you get the feeling, right? Hey, take a walk, say all right, walk away, walk away, Go, there's other great agents out there that are very ethical, honest, truthful. The agents that I like most are the ones that will say, hey, don't know the answer to that question, but I'll guarantee you I will find the answer. Whether I got to go through, you know, Joe Schmo or Ask Here or Ask the Insurance Company, I will look through the code of ethics and the policies and compliance to make sure that you get the policy that you want for yourself and it's perfectly designed for you because every life insurance policy is different and very hard to compare one to another right everything is very unique uniquely designed so with that being said my name is denzel rodriguez hope you have a wonderful day and god bless <music>